welcome to the D&D Beyond Dev Update. Uh, I am Melly Doucette. I am the community manager for D&D Beyond. This week we do not have Mr. Joe Starr, our favorite content boy, but hey, that's okay because last week you didn't have me and I know that you all missed me very, very much. And so I'm going to fill that void with just a lot of my presence today. Uh, we've got our usual roadmap check-in today, and then I'm bringing on Julie Hawkins, uh, who you've seen last week with Underdark Mode, and just one of our favorite guests, and she's gonna give us a tour of the D&D Beyond character sheet and kind of show you some of the stuff that maybe you didn't know was on the sheet or like features that you could use on the sheet, and you know, Hey, maybe you'll discover something new today. And hey, if you've got questions, especially about the character sheet for Julie, go ahead and drop those in the chat, preface it with the word question, and uh, we'll get as many of those answered as we can today. Uh, also, Julie's brought some uh, cool previews uh, about some stuff that they're working on, and I'm extremely excited to share that with you as well. So hey, let's really quickly run through the roadmap so we can get to Julie uh, right now. Hey, Underdark Mode, that came out last week. If you have not tried it yet, what are you waiting for? Uh, you can go ahead and head to your character sheet and, and you can open up that setting sidebar, hit that little cogwheel and turn on under dark mode. And it's just gonna like change the entire look and feel of your character sheet. I know I definitely went through like all of my characters last Thursday when I wasn't here and was just like, mm, what does this one look like? Oh yeah, this backdrop with this one, perfect. Uh, so definitely uh, check that out, enjoy it. We also have two books available for pre-order right now, The Wild Beyond the Witchlight and Strixhaven, A Curriculum of Chaos. Wild Beyond the Witchlight is an adventure book that's gonna be coming out in September. And that is the first uh, fifth edition adventure book into the Feywild. I'm really excited about this. I love the Feywild, it's gonna be super fun. And there's gonna be more information coming out about both these books at D&D Live next week. So definitely get hyped about that. Uh, Strixhaven is a Magic the Gathering setting book and I'm not I have never played Magic the Gathering but I have uh Ravnica and I have Theros like the books for D&D and they are such interesting books like they add so much cool content so I'm really excited about this one as well I think it's gonna add a lot of fun stuff and hey uh subscriber perks so the Sanguine Dice was our June subscriber perk, and because that came out a little bit late, as, as some of you may remember, that came out kind of towards the end of June, we are extending that through July. So if you have not gotten your Sanguine Dice set yet, go ahead and subscribe right now to D&D Beyond. You will get that new dice set into your collection. Uh, and that doesn't mean that there's not going to be other subscriber perks for July. They are in the works, getting ready, getting prepped to come on the way. So basically July, if you subscribe this month, you're gonna get dice and you're gonna get something else. And what that is, we'll talk about that very soon. Uh, finally, House of Lament Watch Along. This is our live play of the House of Lament adventure from Van Richten's Guide to Ravenloft. Joe Star is the DM. He is a, he, he will deny it and, and be all bashful, but he is an amazing DM, especially for horror. I am, blown away by my experience playing in that. That's also with Amy Dallin and Michael Galvis from our content team. It's super fun. It's this, like just intense horror tragedy ghost story. It's super fun. Uh, you can check out the first three episodes on YouTube. We're going to have another watch along with me and the rest of the cast on Friday on YouTube, premiering that live at 4 p.m. PT. You can join us for that. There's only going to be five episodes total and they are all under two hours. So not a huge commitment. Come and check it out. It's super fun. And it's also just fun to like hang out and chat with you all for a couple hours on a Friday. Uh, in progress, uh, as we mentioned the last couple weeks, the encounter uh, tracker, the combat tracker, being able to save and resume your combats. So that is currently in development, in progress, and that's going to be a really exciting addition. Finally, our general 2021 goals. It's that character sheet bat lot backlog. It's going through those books that have all of this amazing new content. We just can't yet support on D&D Beyond. Getting that support is the best way we can, uh, which is in part with our feature system, which is going to help us support things like dark gifts and boons uh, and curses and all of these really cool things that we know a lot of people want on their character sheets. We're working on it. Uh, well, I'm not personally. The people who are really smart and do development work, they're working on it, and I love them for it. Uh, and finally, a continued integration of our shared play space. And what that means is, hey, how can we make it easier and easier for you to run a game where d to Beyond is just this accessory that's there and it's helping you, but you don't really notice it because it's just helping you make your game faster and more efficient and more fun. Uh, so, hey, got any questions? Go ahead and throw them in the chat. We will get to them, as many of them as we can anyways. And let me now bring in the amazing, the wonderful uh, software engineer, Julie Hawkins. 
Hello, Julie. Hello, hello. Welcome back to the Dev Update. Hey, Melly. It's always great to be on the on the stream with you. And of course, we missed Joe, but I missed you last week, and so happy to have you back here. Oh, we have a little kitty here too, and, and we have a cat. You know, see, you don't even need to miss Joe's cats because I have cats as well. Everybody. Yep. Um, Julie, it's. So fantastic to have you here. And Under Dark Mode obviously was a huge hit, and that was one of your projects. But uh, you messaged me this morning and said, hey, I have some other stuff that we're working on that I'd like to show off. And uh, yes, yes, we would love to show that stuff off. So uh, let's go ahead and start to take a look at that, and then we'll get to some questions. Um, so the first thing that you sent me, uh, explain to me, let's go ahead and, and flip to that. What are we looking at here, Julie? So this is a, a project that actually something I kind of just was putting together on the side when I'm not working on the current main focus feature for our team, um, because as you all may have heard me talk about in the past, I absolutely love the customization and decoration side of our character sheet um, digital tool. So uh, I wanted to sort of find a a streamlined way to present all of our fun assets, our, our portraits and our frames and backdrops. And so just sort of, um, you know, came up with a new menu that would allow you to manage these things all in one place. So this is definitely work in progress, not final at all, but just sort of a peek at what's happening behind the scenes where we're working on trying to get this, you know, customization and decoration step to just be better, faster, stronger, cooler, like, you know, all the things. Um, so wanted to show this and share with you all, you know, just some of the, a bit of a passion project really, but, you know, uh, things that are behind the scenes, you know, sort of being, being figured out, uh, for, yes. for you all. So that's a sneak peek I, into this one. Yeah, I absolutely love it. Uh, I have so many times, like there's so many steps to kind of get into that sidebar and to like then open up change backdrops. I love that this just kind of puts it all into this one place and you have this nice drop down where you can kind of switch things around and then just this nice big look at all these different pieces. Cause I get asked sometimes like, Hey, what's, what's that frame you have on your character sheet? And I'm like, I gotta go look at the list. I don't remember which one it's called. I just know that it's like a really cool one. I have to go find it. Uh, so I'm, I'm excited. This is just like a nice little quality of life thing. It's so great. And let's hop to this other one that I know people are going to be really, really excited about. Uh, this is something that we've talked about being in the works. And this is kind of a first look. What are we looking at here, Julie? All right. So this is the highly anticipated and much talked about containers feature. So still a work in progress, but uh, probably being able to see this much sooner than later coming up here in our release uh, cycle. So uh, what you can see here is that we've been able to break out uh, backpacks, chests, bag of holding, you know, all the things that you would want to actually put items inside of and, and sort of role play how that all works out. Uh, we're going to deliver that on the sheet for everybody. So uh, one thing I'll say about this feature is that as we have been working on it as a team, um, we almost are getting distracted by how fun it is just to organize your inventory. Like I will spend 20 minutes renaming my backpack now and figuring out like, this is my jewelry sack and here's all the rings and necklaces that go in it. Um, so, I mean, I'm, I'm super excited to deliver this. Um, the team's super excited to deliver this. So yeah, sneak peek I into containers. This. So much my in one of my campaigns i've got an artificer so i have a bag of holding of course but we also have a tower and we have a fortress and we have a portable hole we have all these different places we're keeping stuff we are, are it's not good we're not good at keeping track of stuff i even have stuff in a notebook but i don't keep it updated so it's just like who had the portable hole what's in the portable hole did we sell the portable hole? and i'm very excited for just how much this looks like it's going to help that but also just i was a kid who uh you know we had like a shelf of vhs's and i'd be like cool these are already in alphabetical order i'm just gonna take them all off and then i'm just gonna put them back in alphabetical order after i've scrambled them up because organizing things is really fun to me as a totally normal child that wasn't weird at all uh, 
So I just think I'm going to do that with all of my character sheets now. You know, you can make a custom container that is your VHS, you know, shelf and make custom <laughs> items that are all your old VHS tapes that you used to organize and just go to your Perfect. heart's delight uh, once we roll this out. So, um, you know, and uh, as you mentioned, uh, you know, party containers, that's also something in the works. Uh, it's the the party aspect of it and the campaign aspect of it will become you know further down the line as we continue on with this feature and develop it out um but the but just the ability to like put things in your backpack i mean come on mm -hmm. we need this we want this we're gonna bring it to you so <laughs> Yes. Oh, I'm so excited. This is just amazing. And the fact that we got to kind of show it a little bit. Oh, that just, I think I, I just saw the chat just going with like containers, containers, containers. Like people were super excited. Uh, and I think that yeah. that's, oh, what a, what a great thing we got to show off here. Uh, let's go ahead and let's answer a question. Then we'll hop into our character sheet tour. We've got a few people asking things to this effect. Uh, but I'm going to just pick Felgi. I'm going to pick on Felgi here. Um, toggles for things like spell effects or, as other people mentioned, you know, features where they are temporary bonus on character sheets. Is that something that the, the team plans to implement in the future? Yeah, we have right now a story in our product board backlog that is about this. Temporary effects is essentially what we're sort of calling it. Um, it's Right now, we're really trying to gather data and feedback to understand what this feature is going to be. So, but we we are definitely have this in the works. We're you know trying to um, honestly when we're playing our team game, this is something we talk about a lot because when you cast a spell or you are a barbarian and you rage, you want to see that. If if I give you my bardic inspiration, I want you know you to be able to see that on your sheet. So, uh, you know this is definitely something that we're going to be able to deliver it just will be a little ways down the line but we're going to get all the things that we need to be able to make this like a fun and like helpful experience once we actually get to it so i love it and, and i think that we've had uh you know andrew who works on you know the encounter builder and combat tracker side of things talk a little bit about how some of this stuff is kind of tied into that combat tracker as well because you have things that say yeah i mean you are blessed but it's for a minute which is 10 rounds of combat so having, you know, the character sheet and the encounter tracker like talk to each other is a, is a part of that as well, right? Yeah, there's a, a lot of integration that, well, you know, once you really start talking about something like a temporary effect or a spell effect, and you really think about what is this, how do you actually show this? How does the, you know, everybody in the party, do they need to be aware of this thing? How do you use, you know, our game log messaging in order to get this uh, communicated across? Um, so it does sort of, it's always the, the thing about working on anything DDB is you ask one question and the answer is always 10 more questions <laughs> about how to support the rule. <laughs> so, you know, that that's there's a lot to consider here, but we are um, really making sure now when we're talking about these types of features of how can we iteratively release things. So it's one thing we're aiming for with the containers so that we don't have to wait for the full share uh, container feature to be ready just to give you containers on your local character sheet. Uh, so yeah. we'll probably try to take that same approach when it comes to this type of thing as well. I love it. And that's kind of the similar thing. We, we see questions coming up. I, I mean, at least I do as I'm going through kind of social media replies and stuff of people saying, hey, like Underdark mode's awesome, but why is it only on the character sheets? And it's that same idea of, cool, we're, we're going to release this because it's ready and then this is a path towards having this available, having these other things that add on to this. Uh, it's like what Patrick says, where he's like, we build the skateboard to get up to the Ferrari. We're, we're, we're working on it. It's all part of the plan. Uh, totally. All right, let's, uh, let's hop into a character sheet here. I have my character from the House of Lament, which again, folks, you should watch that three episodes on YouTube right now. Um, <laughs> Julie, uh, if you, you know, you, you work very, closely with the character sheet all the time. Uh, what are some things that you are always like surprised to hear that people maybe don't notice are, are things that they can do or interact with on their sheets? And let's kind of, you know, let's show some people what we can do. 
Cool. Yeah. I mean, you know, all one thing, like you mentioned, is I work so closely with this tool that I, I sort of know a lot of the ins and outs. Uh, so I'm all, it so, does surprise me often what people say they don't know how to do. Um, but I am, I am aware that we do almost everything is clickable. So it would be easy to miss things. Uh, so first thing, since we did already mention our current decoration uh, stuff, the character frames, portraits, oftentimes people aren't sure exactly how to change that as it is now. So you open mm -hmm. your menu up and then in this menu here, you have a change frame, change backdrop, change uh, theme, and change portrait. So each one of these areas allows you to customize that particular section of your character. Um, and we've started to actually uh, give out some subscriber perks. So you'll see those if you're eligible for that um, in these sections as well as uh, just the free options. And some of those have actually expanded out this year as well, which is really awesome to see. So. Um, for anyone who isn't sure how to customize your frame, hopefully we've pointed you in the correct direction here. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's sort of the first thing. And you can see your well, current frame selected too, and you know, the little blue outline. So, mm -hmm. um, I, yeah, thing... and honestly, for me, a big part of creating my character is like, okay, I've created it. Now I have to like pick the perfect backdrop and the perfect theme color. And now because we have underdark mode, it's also like, and like, is this character an underdark mode character or not? Uh, so it's just, I love making my character sheet look like, yes, this is the mindset I wanna be in when I'm playing. So love the customization. So we now know how to do that. What else we got? Cool. Uh, so another one that I think sometimes is um, not always clear, especially when you're in the desktop mode um, of the sheet is when you have the sidebar open, you can actually configure the position of the sidebar. So uh, by default, if you open up one of those, it's going to be on the right side of your sheet, but there's some controls that uh, Melly's clicking on here. So you can lock it into place, which just means that if you click somewhere else on the sheet, your sidebar won't go away. You can switch sides um, and you can configure whether the sidebar should be on top, overlaid your, your character sheet or uh, like pushed out. So everything gets spread out evenly across your monitor. So. Uh, I, I absolutely this to love be really useful with the game log, particularly. Yeah. <laughs> um, so. Yeah, I absolutely love being able to have like it locked, and then also having that fixed. It's like pushed to the side, so I can still see all my sheet, but also like game log is up, or hey, I need to like open up a spell and see some more stuff. It's just that that is honestly, especially after game log was released. I don't think I did this as much before that, but now it's like yeah, that's like locked, so I can just always have game log up. Yeah, um, the game log definitely made that a lot more of an important feature, I think. And, you know, to be honest, it's something that uh, as we're reviewing what types of information we want to use the game log for, um, we may even have some other configurations that come up so that it will make it a smoother and easier, you know, interaction to, to use that. So uh, speaking of the game log, um, if you are in a character sheet that is not in a campaign, uh, it is not necessarily clear how to access that game log view because typically you'll see it just in your little campaign button with the icon on the side. Um, however, if you go to your menu here uh, and you see in this menu the game log item, that appears on every character whether you're in a campaign or not. So you can actually click into that and you'll be able to see a record of your roles on that sheet. So even if you wanted to use, I use my uh, digital dice to like make decisions during the day if I can't decide like, <laughs> should I have tea or coffee? I'll roll a D20 and do, you know, the one through 10. Oh, so. Anyways, I often do that Absolutely. and I like to use the game log to record my roles for that type of thing. But, um, but yeah, that's available. You can use the game log for your personal character sheet use if you'd like. <laughs> Absolutely love it. Uh, I also do that. I'm like, or if I just like, I'm trying to decide like, how would my character like feel about this? But I don't want to like make a big insight check and get an actual answer from the DM. I'm just like, what's well, just like my vibe on this. I'll just do like a little private insight check and be like, oh, I got a two. I'm just going to play this. Like, I really like, I'm super 
trusting in this. I believe what I believe 100%. I'm like, I don't need to, to tell people what I'm doing if I just want to do it for my own role playing. What's my personality mood here? Gotta, gotta roll for it. Uh, yeah. Love it. So we've got our game, we've got our customizations. What are some other things that people might not uh, realize they can do on here? Yeah, um, another little sort of like hack, I guess, that really helps me when I play is when I'm playing a spellcaster, um, there are oftentimes spells that don't automatically appear in my actions section because they're not like a typical attack action. Um, but I really like to have more options in that area since it's the default view. So if you go to a spell and go to the customize area, uh, there is a little place that says display as attack. If you click that little dude, this spell will now appear in your action section. So it doesn't always appear in the attack section. Uh, uh, what I mean by that is the top attack section, but it will be in this action pane now. And so by default, it's on the front of your character sheet and you can see the details of what that spell does. This is excellent because there's sometimes where I'm like, oh yeah, really, I got this new spell and I always forget to actually use it in play. Or for example, in this in this instance, it's the guidance cantrip, uh, but I don't usually play characters that have that. So I don't remember to be like, oh yeah, I'll, I'll, guide, I'll guidance you, I'll guidance you, I'll guidance you. So just having it in a place where like, I'm gonna see it all the time. I'm like, oh yeah, I can give people a D4 like pretty much whenever. Yeah, for sure. It often reminds me that I have other things as an action, you know, like it that are strictly an attack or something like that. Um, so yeah, those those like utility cantrips and things like that that maybe you just really want to make sure to use them for the the role play fluff of your character because that's what makes the the you know the personality of your character work. Uh, I use that display as attack a lot just to put it in the forefront of my mind. So yeah, uh, that one I really like as a hack. Um, let's see. I There's think also you mentioned my... being able to do. Oh, go ahead. Oh yeah, as I say, my favorite uh, because I, I do like to play a lot of characters that have spells, and I like to just really personalize those spells. They are, they are cast or renamed or changed in some way that is very specific to that character. So my favorite thing, and and I get called out on this sometimes, where people are like you got a lot of homebrew on your sheet, and I'm like, no, actually. I don't. Uh, I just go in and again, opening that sidebar, the sidebar is absolutely magical. And I go into customize where, hey, we just hit that display attack and I can change the name. Uh, so this is guidance, but I renamed it spiritual direction. Whoa, spooky. Um, and then I can add notes too, where I can tell myself, like, how am I casting this spell? So I, I actually did this for uh, Bane here. So now I can see in the notes, like, this is how this character casts the spell Bane. Uh, and I love that bit of customization of like, this is very specific to this character. So yeah, it's just the normal spells that everybody has access to, but I'm making it specific to my character. So it doesn't necessarily feel like this is Fireball or this is whatever else. It is what my character casts. I have a paladin that they don't, they don't cast command, they cast request because it's rude to just command people to do stuff. Uh, so just doing things like that can that. really personalize your character. Yeah, I, I think just uh, any of the customization tools that we have, like you said, I use them all the time as well because it helps me be more immersed in what I'm doing and, uh, and think more like my character would think. Um, so, um, so yeah, as you've mentioned with those customizations, you can do the same types of customizations on items. Um, you can go in and rename, add some notes. We also have sort of just this custom ad hoc item uh, functionality, which doesn't let you create like a, a fully fledged item as if it were homebrew or another item that's in our system, but it gives you the ability to say, you know, on the fly, um, right, I got like a special shiny pearl. It's not the type of pearl that I'm normally adding and I have some special notes later on. Oftentimes what I'll do is I'll add things like that with the custom item field and then later on go do the homebrew thing or find an item that represents it and, and sort of add that in. Um, but yeah. for just quick, quick things, that's a super useful flow to get it into your item um, area, your inventory area. Yeah, and it, it's really handy for stuff as well where, you know, you found something and yeah, everybody at the table is like, okay, we know this is magical, but we haven't identified it yet. So we have just, we have a, a sword with a, you know, a 
ruby embedded in the hilts and we're like we haven't identified we don't know exactly what it is we don't know how much it costs we're just going to put this in as a custom item and later maybe we then expand that into either this is a real item that we can just add or this is something we can homebrew or the dm has already homebrewed for us that we're going to add it to the sheets this is like Ooh, what is this? This is a mystery. Uh, really good, especially for, for DMs who have cursed items that they're giving out. Maybe they don't want to share that curse yet. So they just describe this item and then later, you know, okay, cool. Now that you've attuned to it, add this item to your sheet and that curse that's in there, that's the curse that you have now. Ha ha. Um, yeah. I'm not. I mean, evil. that's something as we were as a team sort of um, starting to come up with the acceptance. Uh, criteria for the, the sharing containers across campaigns, which is something to look forward to. Uh, that is actually some of the things that we were talking about are things like maybe, you know, you don't want to reveal the full uh, magic ability of this item yet and, and things like that. So uh, the, those pro those types of controls probably won't be in the first release of um, sharing containers across campaigns, but they're things that we want to be able to do because it just makes it that much more fun. I mean, I, I don't want to have my item identified until the wizard in my party casts identify item on it, <laughs> you know? So, yeah. uh, so I think it would be a really, really awesome to see our, our tools work that way too. Oh, I absolutely um, agree. Uh, let's really quickly do a couple questions and then we will jump back into the character oh. sheet. Um, uh, Porteus or Porteus6 uh, asks, hey, uh, is part of this inventory management in these different containers, uh, do, are those things that have to be on your character or, hey, can I have a chest and that thing isn't something that I have on me, it's just a, a chest I have somewhere and I put some items into that. Yeah, we, are discussing right now exactly how this is going to work. So um, the first iterations of our containers probably won't have a lot of the weight um, concept. So whether the weight should be on your actual, you know, character person or not, and and all that. Um, but we are planning on getting that functionality so that you can have items in a container, but you're not actually holding that container so the weight wouldn't apply to your character itself. Um, so, so yeah, the long, long story short, yes, there will eventually be a way to sort of drop a container with items in it and have that weight not applied to you. Uh, I love it. This is great. Yeah. Uh, we also had a question come in. I'm just trying to find it back on the list here, uh, but it was about hey, uh, you know, so you can have chest bag of holding these other things. Can we create, you know, like a custom thing that's not, you know, a thing that already exists in the game where we want to create a new holding item? Like, hey, I got a tower. I want to make a tower location for stuff to be in. So the, the um, initial support, the best that you'll be able to do for that will be to, which, you know, will essentially function the exact same way, is to take something like a backpack or a chest or another container that we've already got in the system and rename it to, you know, tower storage or whatever the, the thing is. Perfect. Um, however, we are fully out planning out the homebrew support for containers. So, you know, Eventually, um, in this iterative release process, you will see the ability to just create your own container. Um, I will also, you know, mention here that um, our feedback portal for for inventory uh, is super useful. We really are like mining through that feedback, and so you know that's a great place to put that type of thing. If we, if you know, all the the more hits that we see in a particular ask for containers, the more effort and time we'll be able to put into it. So, um, so yes, yeah, definitely use that feedback. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, there's uh, and people who are looking for that, that's over on the forums. You'll see kind of in that feedback section, we now have some areas that are labeled, you know, XYZ portal, and you can hit on that. And then you can open up into exactly where there are all of these, hey, this could be a part of this feature and you can go and you can kind of add, you know, a plus that you can add a little, uh, hey, this is what this would mean to me and add some extra context and that goes to the team. Also, 
across our social media, across our Discord, across everywhere. Uh, our team, myself and my moderators, we are you know collecting information and we are passing that along as well. Uh, so just make sure you tell us what you're looking for and we will we will try our best. Uh, let's hop back over to the sheet here. Julie, what, what are some other things that maybe somebody doesn't realize, yeah, I, I can do this right on the sheet? Yeah, um, so one thing that's actually been really useful in the, the current game that I'm in with my teammates is um, the ability to add a custom skill check. Um, so if you look at the bottom of your skill list, you can add a custom skill um, right there. Yep, you know where to go. And so uh, for, for my personal, or, you know, our, our personal game's use for this one is for vehicle proficiencies. Uh, so we are playing a game which involves a lot of like sea travel, uh, ships and, and vehicles. And um, some of us have backgrounds or features that give us proficiency in those things. Um, and so it's, you know, pretty common for DM to say, you know, roll a proficiency check for that, for the um, water vehicles. Uh, so you can do that here with the custom skill so that you don't have to do math. That's one thing I love about our character sheet is I don't like to do math. So I like to click the button and math is done for me. Um, so using that custom skill, I've named my custom skill, I'm on a boat, because uh, that's what I feel like my skill was. Um, and then you can you know, go ahead and add, is it proficiency? It uses my dex check um, and whatever else makes sense for the custom skill that you're setting up. Uh, and now whenever I wanna do something because I'm good at being on a boat, I just roll, I'm on a boat. And hopefully I'm alive. <laughs> I love it. I've done that as well for me. I've got, you know, I've, I've I used some custom, uh, you know, uh, tools. So as well, if you if you hop over into this, it's the same thing where you can add custom proficiencies. So I added a piano and violin. They're not items that exist as instruments, but I added them because that's exactly the flavor I wanted for my character. So I added them there. And then I carry this violin around all the time with this character. So I added that as well as a skill on my list that I can like specifically click that if I'm doing anything violin related. And you can do that. Yes. Uh, my my artificer's skill section is very long because they're proficient in so many tools and they get like expertise and all these other things so it's just so much easier if i can like one stop shop just click and go and roll it plus uh, i mean I, it's I, just fun to rename your skill checks to something fun why not <laughs> yeah and you can also hey uh you can modify skills in here so if your dm says hey I'm just going to give you a plus one in nature. You don't have to like go create a whole feat for that. You can just pop in here and be like, yeah, miscellaneous bonus one, DM said so. And now I'm just always going to have a plus one to nature checks. Because why not? Or hey, maybe in this game, uh, my nature checks are not intelligence based. Maybe they're wisdom based. So I can just switch it, switch it. So there's lots of things you can customize. If you just click on it and click customize, you're going to have so many options for modifying things. Hey. I got mage armor. I'm going to customize my armor class to, you know, help me represent my mage armor. Oh, hey, I got a temporary bonus to strength. I can go and uh, I can update my strength and give myself a little bonus in there. There's there's just so many things you can just little uh, little modifications right in there. Whoops. I also just rolled a strength check. Hey, why not? Just wanted to test uh, it out. <laughs> why, why not? I also see some people uh, asking in the chat about wild shapes, animal companions, and these other things. And hey, uh, that that is a thing we can do. Um, so let's let's check out the extras section here, Julie. Can you give us yeah. a little uh, chat about this? Cool. Yeah. So if you uh, head over to the extras section in your uh, main box here on the sheet, and then manage extras. Uh, this will bring up the ability to search through all the things that we call extras, which really are creatures and vehicles. It's sort of what we've got in this area for now. Um, so in our add uh, extra uh, drop down, uh, we can look in, see basically different categories of things that we want. So whether it's a wild shape stat block that you'd like to add, um, a mount for your character that you've gained, um, or you know a vehicle stat block because you are the person on your in your campaign to be in charge of the vehicle stat block. Yeah, um, I'm on this a boat, is where you're as we know. I'm on a boat. Uh, so yeah, um, if you you know, and there's a the few things here. If you are a druid and uh, you use the wild shape drop down, it will by default 
follow the Druid wild shape rules when you add this. Um, however, we give you the ability to bypass those things. So you are able to add a wild shape to your sheet if you're not a Druid, because maybe you can wild shape and you're not a Druid. Um, so we, we would never want to restrict things like that um, from your character. But this is your sort of one-stop uh, shop for all the extra things uh, that your character might have. Yeah, and I really like this as well. You can see here I picked wild shape, but I'm a bard. I don't have wild shape. And I like that it added, hey, adding a creature of this category is outside of normal game rules. So it's like, hey, what is this wild shape thing? Oh, okay. I I can I see that I can override this, but it also reminds me in case maybe I don't know that this is outside the rules. That hey, just an FYI. So I, I really do like that that's the thing that's there. Uh, and also, hey, if, if you as in you can you can kind of sort things, you can search by environment, which is really helpful for druids, like maybe, hey. So uh, I'm I'm from the desert, so I'm just gonna type in desert and like see what comes up that fits my wild shape abilities right now. It's gonna be a lot easier to just find things and pick them. Uh, and you can even like, hey, I got a, let's just say I got a pet aboleth, cause why not? Uh, so now I got this aboleth that is in my uh, collection here and I can now, uh, you know, hey, hit points, I can modify that. And at the bottom here, if I'm remembering correctly, there should be a customize, right? Am I remember? Yeah, customize at the customize top. At the top <laughs> usually, yeah. Perfect. So yeah, I can now rename. I can give that aboleth a name. It's Abby the aboleth. Why not? Uh, Abby. I can change the size, the type, the alignment, the armor class. I can add some notes to Abby, which will again, it will show right here. Uh, Abby is very friendly. And there you go. Now I just have this information really handy for me here. And hey, if I need to now go and do some you know, Abby is participating in a combat. I can see all the information I need for Abby over here. It, it's right there on the sheet. So I, I do get this question on socials. If people ask me, hey, I want to put my wild shape on my sheet. Boom. You can um, just hit that extras and you have like all of these really cool options. Um, we got time for a thing. Is there one more thing you want to highlight on this sheet? Well, uh, let's see. I think I got through um, most of my points that I wanted to share. Um, yeah, I, I don't really have anything else here that are, are things I really wanted to highlight, but happy to keep answering some questions if there are any. Yeah. Let me go take a look and see what we have. Uh, boop -a -doop. Uh, so I'm seeing, you know, questions that we that came up as we were doing that about, hey, wild shape, hey, uh, these other kind of sections that we just talked about. So hopefully, folks that did answer questions on those uh, as well. Uh, Nikorion uh, did ask about transferring containers from one character to another in the same campaign. Uh, we did touch on this a little bit earlier, but Julie, if you just want to kind of give uh, just a highlight for this. Yeah, so that is um, in the feature for sharing is, uh, you know, uh, it might not be in the initial release once we get the campaign sharing working, um, but, uh, you know, the full plan is to be able to have shareable containers with share with, with items inside that another party member can equip out of that container. Um, so, you know, just the whole gambit of how you would play this at the table um, as, as close as we can match that to. So, um, again, it may be not in the initial portion of the sharing containers there, uh, you know, initially we're definitely just going to make sure that there is like a one good sharing space for that campaign that items can sort of be, you know, put into, taken out of, equipped from, and then we'll get further into, you know, a more a backpack that the can campaign owns or a bag of holding that the campaign owns. Um, and everyone should be able to interact with that backpack and sort of see everything as the same as it would be reflected on anybody else's sheet, if that makes sense. Ah, oh, I love it. Uh, Reiki BB, I just want to answer this one really quickly because they're asking, hey, recommendation for tracking the HP of multiple summon creatures of the same type. That extra sidebar, you can add multiples of the same type. I could, you know, I can have Abby and I can have Abraham, the Abolith. I can have them both in there. I can track their HP separately. All you have to do is just go back into that search, add another pet, or whatever it is, I'm just picking pet, uh, and add another one of that same type. So you can absolutely, if you're, you know, summoning eight pixies, go ahead, you can add eight pixies in there, and you can definitely track those separately. So uh, thanks for that question, uh, Reiki BB. Um, and let's see here. Oh, hey, Julie, let's, let's test you. 
because I watched last week <laughs> and I think you've been here a number of times. Do you know the name of your favorite dinosaur this week? <laughs> Um, I, <laughs> I think it, at this point, I think it starts with a D, but I, it's the, <laughs> it's the jazz hands out. Yeah, there we go. I was waiting, I was waiting for you to get those jazz hands out because Storm Knight UK, uh, Storm Knight, a uh, wonderful member of our team, Faith Elizabeth Lilly, why is the Dilophosaurus the best dinosaur? And again, Julie just, erase that name Just from your memory <laughs> but that's why uh thank you everybody for julie thank you so much for coming on showing us a, a preview of some things to come which was amazing but then also going through the character sheet with us showing us some of those maybe hidden abilities that maybe people didn't realize were there uh you're amazing um so thank you thank you so much uh and it's everybody uh, who joined us today yeah, everybody who joined us today, thank you so much for watching. Uh, we'll be back here next week for more Dev Update as well. Later today at 12 p.m. PT, Amy Dallin is hosting a DDB Live with B. Dave Walters, the one and only B. Dave Walters. They're going to be talking about level 20. What and why should you play at level 20 in D&D? So make sure to pop back here on Twitch at 12 p.m. PT for that. Uh, and I will see you all later. Thanks so much and have a great day. It's D &D.